the Children's Hour. For nearly three decades, the youth of the Ozarks rushed home from school each weekday afternoon, dialing their blocky television sets to Channel 3 for an hour of fun and learning with Aunt Norma and her puppet friends. You know, every kid who had access to a TV, they were in front of it when these children's programs were on. Like generations and generations and generations of Ozarkers, I mean, you came home and when the set went on and here was children's hour. The children's playtime cottage opens wide its door. And we would like to tell you the fun there is in store. And I can remember that uh, Rusty Rooster's voice, happy birthday, you know, that kind of thing. And it, it just cracked me up every time. What's Aunt Norma gonna talk about today? What picture is she gonna draw today? What are the puppets gonna talk with Aunt Norma about today? Basically, they were home from school, tired, tired of people telling them what to do and, and trying to teach them to learn things and just wanting to relax and lonesome. And I was there. For 29 years, Norma Champion was there in every home across the Ozarks, making a profound impact in the lives of her viewers. As the longest running and most cherished host of the popular Children's Hour program, she became the ultimate role model for local kids, a familiar face they could trust to provide fun and educational content every afternoon. Her enduring TV legacy began all the way back in 1957, when a then 24-year-old Norma made her first visit to Springfield's local KY3 station. My uh, first child was only a year old, and I'd always been very, very active in wherever I was in the community and working. And I was kind of just feeling like I wanted, I wanted to do something. And television was brand new. And I thought, oh, it's so interesting. I would love to. I thought maybe I'd go on Saturdays and volunteer or something. Norma set up an appointment with Carl Fox, the station manager of KY3 at the time, hoping to assist the new studio behind the scenes. She was surprised, however, when Mr. Fox presented her with an entirely different proposition. And so he said, well, I guess you came to audition for Children's Hour. Well, I had to think what an audition was, and I thought, Children's Hour, I'd never even seen the show. And I said, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> the Children's Hour, which had been airing since KYTV signed on in 1953, was an urgent need of a new host to replace the recently departed Aunt Alice Lowe. Norma's arrival at the studio proved to be the opportunity of a lifetime for her and for everyone else. Uh, I auditioned in his office, oh. not in the studio. I never saw a camera. I had the job before I ever really knew much about cameras. He said, uh, uh, hold up, pretend you're holding up a uh, tube of toothpaste and sell it to me. <laughs> and I said, sell it to you or sell it to kids? And he said, sell it to kids. And I said, okay. So I talked about what it looked like on the front of it and, and what it felt, tastes like in your mouth and, and what to watch for in the store and ask mother to buy this for you instead of that. <laughs> and then he said, and he went through his shelf and he found a book and he said, sit down here and read me this book. And so I said, well, you'll have to get down lower then. And so I said, you sit down here. And so I turned around and I showed him the pictures and I read him the book. And he said, I'll call you. And in about a week, he called me and said, uh, I've, I've got one other person to try out. Uh, but he said, I can pretty well tell you that you have a job. She got the job. It was a job unlike any the young Norma Champion had ever done before, but one that she quickly took to heart, becoming the embodiment of everything the Children's Hour was meant to represent. For almost 30 years, she stood in front of the hot lights and bulky cameras each afternoon, wearing an infectious smile, and she provided her young audience with engaging activities to pass the time. Uh, we did drawing time, story time, uh, craft time, <laughs> uh, food fun. So they were things that I could think of that I sort of visualized usually one child at home because there were a lot of rural children watching and uh, they didn't have a lot of after school activities. Despite having never been in front of a camera before the children's hour, Norma says she didn't feel anxious about being on set. 
you know, if, if you're going to speak to a group and you uh, don't think about how am I coming across, how am I sounding, how am I looking, and you're thinking, what can I say to help them get what I'm trying to tell them, then you aren't thinking about anything to be nervous about. In addition to her role as Aunt Norma, Champion acted as a writer and producer for KY3, developing her own format for the show. I had to get everything together, I had to plan it, I had to write it, and do it. Apart from Aunt Norma's contribution to the show, the Children's Hour heavily relied on its cherished puppet characters, Skinny McGinnis and Rusty Rooster. Give me three, Clinton! Skinny and Rusty were both voiced by this man, a talented former New York theater actor named Fred Rains. As a friend of the original Children's Hour host, Alice Lowe, Rains had reluctantly agreed to voice the puppet characters in order to give the show a touch of humor and spontaneity. He didn't really want to do it. <laughs> it was a nuisance to him. So he'd just kind of run down the studio and do it. So Fred got behind the puppet theater and, and he was a rooster and he was Skinny McGinnis. And he would talk and he would introduce the, the cartoons and the commercials and different kinds of things. And he would and do a lot of side jokes with the engineers that w passed over the kids' heads, but adults loved it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt Norman. And I'm Rusty Rooster. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> I sat uh, on a little stool uh, in front of the puppet theater like this and uh, talked to Skinny and Rusty, and uh, uh, that's what the kids were used to. Skinny McGinnis, a gangling little boy in a top hat and tuxedo, was based on a character Reigns remembered from an old radio program. I took the voice from an old Lum and Abner character on radio named Ben Withers, and he talked as if he had a bad cold. And I thought, well, Skinny, being Skinny, probably had a lot of colds. Alongside Skinny was his inseparable partner, Rusty Rooster. Rusty's character was originally invented by KY3 co-manager Claudia Cox before being passed on to Reigns. Um, when Claudia used to do the commercials sometimes, and she was the one that got the rooster, and she made this voice, a brassy rooster. And she had to be out of town one day, so Fred had to do two puppets. He had to do the rooster. And so it was Fred Rains trying to sound like Claudia, who was trying to sound like a, her idea of a rooster. And that's where the voice came from. And, and when we would sing happy birthday, uh, Rusty would always say, blow out the candle. And for years and years and years, and sometimes people would say it and didn't even know where they got the idea. People would sing happy birthday at parties and somebody would say, blow out the candle. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. All together now. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish. I blow out candles. Over the years, Skinny and Rusty were joined by a cast of other puppet characters, including Professor Doolittle, Pistol Pack and Pete, and Floyd the Whale all of whom were voiced and acted by Fred Rains. 37 years later, the puppets now sit quietly on a bookcase in Norma Champion's Springfield home, a gift to her from Rains. I feel a little sacrilege handling them myself when they're Fred's puppets. Yeah, makes me miss Fred. Not far away, other old treasures from the Children's Hour have found a new home at Springfield's History Museum on the square. Backup copies of Skinny, Rusty, and Professor Doolittle sit atop the famous castle set piece in the basement. Even after four decades of disuse, they remain in pristine condition, a testament to the dedication of museum staff. I wouldn't want to have this castle out all the time or these wonderful puppets because they are environmentally fragile and you know, they need to go away in the dark. They need to be, you know, they need to be protected so we can then bring them back out again and use them another time. In 2021, curator Joan Hampton Porter oversaw an exhibit dedicated to children's television programming in the Ozarks. 
Thanks to donated artifacts from KY3 and another local source, the museum on the square was able to include the children's hour as an integral part of the display. It took a while because um, we wanted to do appropriate research as always. Um, we are very uh, dedicated to providing very good educational as well as entertainment um, exhibits uh, in our exhibits. Um, and there's not a lot of things like film footage out there anymore for these shows. Most of it, unfortunately, is no longer existing. Um, so we did some reaching out, trying to find additional materials. One of the most popular pieces featured in the exhibit was this, the Children's Hour Castle. A prominent part of the show during Aunt Norma's run, the castle involved a weekly contest in which children could try for a special key to unlock the gates and discover a hidden prize inside. And the child whose name was drawn would draw a key, attempt to open it. If the door opened, then the key, they would open the, pull the doors open. There was a present behind. And for that child and for a child who was at home who had sent in a postcard or something to um, ask to be part of it. Everyone would assume it's made out of wood. Well, partly. But it's also made out of cardboard and painted duct tape. Who knew you could paint duct tape? <laughs> um, I mean, and there's, a few, you know, there's some screws and things in there, but the body of it is wood, painted duct tape, and cardboard. For those who witnessed the museum's exhibit, the Children's Hour relics brought back a flood of memories from decades past. Generations of Children's Hour fans came to the square to remember what once was in the world of television. Well, I heard more than a few people, you know, I remember being on Children's Hour and they're talking to their child and in some cases their grandchild who also were on Children's Hour. Um, oh, don't you remember sitting down and watching this with me? We had the benefit of having wonderful local programming that was designed to meet the needs of our community. Um, and so much now is national, is international. It has a much broader appeal, but it doesn't have that personalization. Um, you don't have the connection. I mean, all of those thousands and thousands of children who went to the stations to be on these shows, who could see the cameras working, how, you know, what was going on, you know, how, you know, how television worked to some extent. You don't get that today. Um, it was just a whole different world. Lynn Brownies, well, I'm going to call your name, and when I do, would you please hold up your hand and say something? Over the years, many thousands of local children were invited to make appearances on the show, acting as Aunt Norma's helpers to let viewers at home see their friends and peers engage in the daily activities. And, oh, we have, we have a relative of a KY3 star here. <laughs> Parents of local children could phone the station or fill out a postcard with their child's name and age. A few weeks later, a letter signed by Skinny McGinnis himself would be sent back in the mail, providing instructions on what time and date to appear at the studio. For KY3 anchor Steve Grant, the children's hour was more than just a fond childhood memory. His first fateful visit to the station in 1963 wound up being the inspiration for his television career. You came home and when the set went on and here was children's hour, you know, and like, what's Aunt Norma going to talk about today? What picture is she going to draw today? What are the puppets going to talk with Aunt Norma about today? And so it was like, how do I get on there? So, you know, so mom called and, you know, a few weeks later, the postcard arrived saying, Steve Grant, please come to KY3 and be on children's hour and such and such a date. And so when I got here, it was like, it might as well have been Disneyland. I mean, uh, you know, it was just magical. Well, I remember just looking around, it's like, uh, you know, there's one thing of looking at it on the screen at home and then being on this side of the screen as there always has been with television. And, and there was like all these bright lights and these people behind these cameras and, and they would roll the cartoons, uh, the, you know, the Looney Tunes that were on film. And of course, you couldn't see them. And it's like, well, where are the cartoons, you know? but you could hear them in the background. Years later, an adult Steve Grant was again invited to appear on the show. She later had me on as a guest again after a trip to Scotland to find my Clan Grant roots. I came back with a, a, you know, a full kilt and, and a coat and those high socks and everything else and, and a 
tie that matched the Grant Tartan. So she had me on Children's Hour to explain, you know, exactly what Scottish men wore and, <laughs> and to model it. You know, so it was kind of funny. I think they put the phone, taped the phone to the professor's hand. This is the professor. Here at the KY3 news station, photos and memorabilia from the show sit behind a heavy glass case, a poignant reminder of the station's enduring legacy. Yeah, Norma, merchandising, regular features, craft time, drawing time, food fun, story time, cartoon time, movie time, wishing well. Wishing well was Skinny and Rusty would sing to kids that wrote in that they didn't feel well or call the station. And they, they this was a little song, we're wishing, we're wishing. We're wishing, we're wishing for you to get well. Keep wishing, and soon you'll be all well. All well. And after appearing on Children's Hour, for several Christmases thereafter, my only request for Christmas was puppets. Specifically, if they could find Rusty Rooster or Skinny McGinnis, which didn't happen, but my parents did find in a mail order catalog a puppet stage made of cardboard that you folded up and it was about as tall as I am now. Even beyond the Springfield area, the Children's Hour had a lasting impact. For Joplin resident Randy Turner, the show was one of several he watched growing up in Southwest Missouri yet he can still pick out some of his favorite memories from the Channel 3 production. In uh, Newtonia, where I grew up, we had three television stations. We had uh, channels 12, 7, and Channel 3 out of Springfield, uh, which meant that we were getting two stations that were both NBC stations at the time and a CBS station. And I would watch the Children's Hour, and they also had uh, puppets on there that were really good. Uh, trying to remember the names, I think it was Rusty the Rooster and uh, Skinny McGinnis. And uh, they would come on there every day and uh, they would uh, wish the kids who had birthdays, birthdays. And I can remember that uh, Rusty Rooster's voice, happy birthday, you know, that kind of thing. And it, it just cracked me up every time. Although Turner himself never got to make an appearance on the Children's Hour, he did later cross paths with Norma Champion. Happy birthday, and uh, then uh, Aunt Norma, who was the host of it for about 30 years, I was, I was lucky enough to, to get to meet her briefly uh, as I was an adult at the time. And she was uh, in, I believe she was in the House of Representatives at that point. And she is one of those TV celebrities that, uh, that holds up. She may have been a state representative, but she was still Aunt Norma. After Children's Hour went off the air in 1986, Norma Champion went on to serve on the City Council and later in the Missouri House of Representatives and State Senate. She acted as a professor of broadcasting and communication theory at Evangel University and became the first woman inducted into the Missouri Broadcaster Association's Hall of Fame in 2014. But despite all these accomplishments, Norma credited her role on the Children's Hour as having had the biggest impact on her life. It was, it was like anybody's life. One experience gives you understanding and experience that leads to the next experience. So, so Children's Hour certainly helped me in uh, uh, feeling comfortable with people that I wouldn't have known otherwise. And it helped me feel comfortable to handle things that I didn't quite know how to do yet, but could easily learn, you know. To this day, she enjoys touching moments with former viewers of the show. Uh, about a month ago, uh, I went into a restaurant and this gentleman grabbed my hand and said, oh, I, oh I, I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to see you for a long time. You have no idea the influence you've had on me. And this is rather typical of things I've heard. And I said, oh, that's great, you know. And he said, uh, do you know what? And he looked at me right. He said, I I always thought for sure you could really see me. And I thought, that's exactly what I was trying to do. And I said to him, do you know what? I could. And I said, I don't mean, you know, I didn't see you with physically. But I said, I did see you because I looked through the camera and I visualized you sitting there and thinking what you'd want to do. And I said, I did see you. He said, I knew you could see me. <laughs> 
<laughs> a legacy of fun and friendship passed on to the next generation. It gave me a sense that I was doing what I was supposed to do at the time, and that I made a difference in a lot of children's lives, and that uh, they still, it still has benefits. What, what more could you get out of a job? Mm -hmm.